Hiya, it's Rob at Groove User again. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the big update to Groove Pages as of the middle of February 2021. So let's jump in and take a look. So as I said, in the middle of February, there was quite a big update pushed through for Groove Pages and um, quite a few things have changed in terms of how the interface works. So if you're going on any of my previous videos, there's a few slight differences you need to do in order to how you're going to get to edit things and things like that. So I just want to show you that here. And just to um, just as a reminder, if there's any other updates to any of my videos, I'll always put a pinned comment at the top um, in the comments section of any of those videos, just so that you know uh, to go and check out what's changed so that you can still work your way through things. So as with any update in Groove, the best thing to do is to do a hard reload and empty the cache in your browser. I'll show you how to do that. I'm in Chrome at the moment. So just right click anywhere on the screen, click inspect, and then go up to your refresh uh, button near the um, address bar, right click it, and then click empty cache and hard reload. It takes a couple of seconds. Now that's done that now. You can also, um, if you want to be ultra safe and double check, you can log out, do the same thing again and log back in. That way you're guaranteed to have the latest version updated in your browser. So now with that done, let's look at what's changed in this update. So the first thing, when you click on an item, you no longer get the menu popping up on the right hand side, the editor menu. So to get this up, there's a new icon up, on the, up here above these, uh, these icons above the element you click on. You have the um, up one level, the trash can, the duplicate, and now you have a pencil icon. If you click on that, that opens up the editor menu. And that will stay there, even if you click on another element, it still stays in place. It stays there until you either close it or until you click on this menu on the left. So, so to bring an element in it's now closed the menu on the right but if i click again on an item it closes that and it opens up the editor menu again so that's quite straightforward the other thing um, you'll notice is the drag handles and the control um, sort of scaling handles have moved or disappeared at the moment now the reason for that is because when you were um, selecting small things like these icons you would get uh, the, the handles would be obstructing what you're actually looking at so you can't see what you're doing so to get the grab handles if you want them once you've got the editor menu open all you have to do with your item selected that you want to uh, use the handles on is click the pencil again and then they show up and you can use them as normal so for example if i go down to these icons you can see that's fine i can see what i'm doing with that now but if i if these were to come up as default every time, which they used to, um, you just can't see what you're doing. So it's quite a good feature. So that's that one. The next thing is they've changed, and this is a big one, they've changed how the um, edits apply to multiple devices. So I will update my um, mobile responsiveness tutorial to reflect this, but I just wanted to let you guys know at the moment how to you know how to navigate this with the changes so what happens now is you can no longer select more than one de device at a time for editing so where maybe we we picked the uh, i mean the way i used to work was i'd have a desktop and a laptop and i would set my spacing and things for those then i would select everything from the horizontal tablet down to the mobile and i would do my spacing for those and maybe tweak mobile generally but at the moment um, we need to adjust spacing and sizing individually on each um, device, but everything else apart from spacing and sizing will flow across all devices. So it makes it nice and simple. You don't need to think, you know, if you change the size of font, you don't need to think, oh, did I, did I do that on mobile or did I do it on desktop or, oh no, I did it on desktop and I meant to do it on mobile and you get in a mess. So it's made it much easier um, and user friendly. Uh, particularly from a beginner's point of view on that side of things. So let me show you what I mean. So if I click on this text here 
And if I want to make it yellow, for example, like so, that change will be reflected on all devices, as you can see there. Um, if I want to change the size of the text, it's three rem at the moment. If I bring it down, 1.25, that's now brought it down on all devices. So let's take that back up to three. Now, when I said about everything changes except sizing and spacing, so let me show you again. If I center the text, it centers it on all of them. But if I come in and say if I wanted to add some uh, padding on the left, if I add padding in here, let's say I put two in, that doesn't get added to here. And I think the reason they've done it for now is because padding, particularly when you get to the mobile device, um, that was what was throwing a lot of people's design out and um, you know people were getting in a bit of a mess with it. So I think they are going to bring back some of that functionality of being able to edit more than one device at a time. But for now, this is what we're working with. So again, as and when that updates, I'll let you guys know. So for now, what we do is we adjust individually on each device. You just click on it. And what happens, it's quite clever. I've just put, I mean, this looks awful because of the size. Let's just bring the font down so I can show you what I'm talking about. If I put in, um, let's say, 1.5 on here, I move up to the next device. It hasn't put any in, but if you look in the menu, it's showing me 1.5, and that's there as a reference to remind you what you just did on the last screen. So you haven't got a flick back and forth. Um, so now, if I want to apply 1.5 here, I can just drag down a notch and back up and that's done and I can do that on all of those if I want to or I can just take it to zero so that's the way that works on there um, let's just go back take this back a few steps now the other thing is if you want to do something on one device only so let's say we want to do on desktop we like the text white but when we get down to the mobile devices we want the text to be yellow you just click this up here single screen override mode and what that will do instead of for all of those things that would normally flow to all screens now if you want them just to happen on this one screen you can click that and you'll know that whatever you change in here won't affect any of the other devices so i can go in here now and i can safely make this text say green um, i can bring the font size down i could make it left aligned and that won't have affected any of these other screens. But you just need to remember to turn that off. If you want to do a global change, um, say I want to make all of these buttons uh, sort of red, for instance, I just need to remember to have it on there and it's done it to all of them. If I had that on by accident and I went to change them all to, let's say, blue, and I've got this single screen override mode on, it hasn't done the others because I, I, I'm only doing it to the desktop. So that's another pretty cool feature. The next one is this reset styles button. Now this is really cool because if, you, um, if you've ever been in a situation where you've edited your site, you've got it all down and then you go down to see maybe mobile view or something like that. And you've got text covering buttons and text dropping out of containers and you're finding it hard to troubleshoot where where it's gone wrong you can click on elements and you can reset them and what it does it takes it back to its default setting as if it's just been dragged onto the page uh, for the first time so let me show you again with this text you can see i've got three rem text uh, montserrat is the font it's bold it's left aligned um, that's all that's on there at the moment so if i want to reset that if it's if it's gotten a bit of a mess say if i've um, perhaps I've dragged this in or something like that I don't like it I can just click reset styles and it takes it all back to its default setting but it goes a step further because if you now want to get it back to how it was originally when it was white but looking good uh, I can go down here and I can see what settings were applied to it so I've see I've got this little green dot on the text so I can look and see what was applied to it so I've, I've got Montserrat font in there obviously it's not showing it 
but it's doing the same as it did with the spacing earlier. It's doing that to remind us what uh, setting was on there previously. So if I want to bring it back, I just go down and click on it and it's changed it back. If I want the text white, I just click here and it brings back the color because it already, already remembered it for me. Um, I'll click on bold just to make sure that's there. I'll click on left aligned on and off. So usually you have to go either up and down a notch in terms of size or switch something on and off or click it again and it will come back to what it was previously. So with the size, you can see at the moment this isn't 3 rem, but it's telling me that it was previously. So I'll just grab the slider, pull it down, back up, and that's now 3 rem. And that would remind you if you had any space in or anything like that as well. So for instance, if I want to do this block, you can do it on a, I'm doing it on a text element there, you see. If I wanted to do it on a block, it would actually reset the block only and not everything inside it. So if your block spacing has got messed up, messed up, for instance, you could click on the block, do reset styles, and it's got rid of the image in the background. If I just show you, just so you can see, it's still got all of the text as it was before. It's just all of the block settings have gone. But as before, it tells us what the image was there. If I want to bring that back, um, I would just need to bring the image in. Uh, that was on nothing there, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it um, grey so you can see it. See what's happening. So if I go down to spacing, this is showing us what the spacing was previously. So if I click those, it's showing as six. Obviously, you can see there's nothing there at the moment. But all I've got to do is go down and then back up, and that's put in the spacing that was there before. And I can do the same with the padding at the sides. And now that is back to how it was before. Obviously, apart from the image, um, because I've just pulled up a template here, this is just pulling a, a temp, an old template, um, not an old template, a template image, which I haven't got in my uh, Groove account. So if I just back up, you'll see how that was before. And there you go, see? So all of that spacing, even though you reset the block, it still tells you what it was, and if you want it back, you can go in and put that in. So you can put things back one, one by one um, and see how it affects your uh, design. So that's about it, really. They're the main updates. So the main one being the pencil icon to open your menu. That's a big one, obviously, otherwise you can't edit anything. We've got the changes that flow to all devices. So everything flows to all devices except for sizing and spacing so width and height sizing down here and padding and margin they will have to be done separately at the moment again it may change and when it does i'll let you know and everything else flows to all devices unless you put the single screen override mode on and then you're just editing for that one particular device and then you've got your reset styles for uh, if you've got you know something that you've got into a mess you want to take it right back to its default setting and start again it saves you having to rebuild a whole block from scratch you can just reset those individual elements so i hope you found that video useful let me know in the comments if you had um and please subscribe to the channel uh like the video if you can it really helps the youtube algorithm and it lets me keep making these videos for you so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.